Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is larger than n. All right, so in a program, write a method that accept two arguments, an array and a number n. Assume that the array contains integers. The method should display all of the numbers in the array that are greater than the number n. Okay, so we're going to create a method. Um, yeah, create a method, and then we are going to pass in an array and pass in a number, and then the then the method should basically spit out or return basically all the numbers in that array that are greater than the number n you know that was passed to the, the method okay so um, it will make more sense as we as we do this so let's start I'll create the class and I'll call it larger than n well in this program we are not going to go ahead and create like a, a separate class to work with and create an object we just we just working with one program all right, so now I'll go ahead and I'll create the main method. Oops. Okay, so in a program, write a method that accepts two arguments. So we know we're going to write a method, right? So I'm going to write that method above the main method. You can also write it below the main method. I just like to write my methods above the main method just because it looks logical to me that way. But sometimes I write it below. But for this program, I'll write it above. Okay. All right. So it's going to be a public static method. I need to now specify the return type. Okay. So it says write a method that accepts two arguments, an array and a number, n, an array and a number n. Assume that uh, the array contains integers. The method should display all of the numbers in the array that are greater than the number n. So it says the method should display all the numbers in the array that are greater than the number n, meaning we have to write this method in such a way that it returns back um, all the numbers in that array greater than n, right? But we can't return multiple numbers that way. We can return multiple numbers, however, in an array. We can store all the numbers in an array and then return the array, right? So let's create this met method in such a way that it's going to return an integer array because we know we are dealing with an integer. We said we should assume that the array contains in integers and we are returning all the integers in that array that are greater than the number n. And so we're going to compile all numbers, all the numbers greater than n in an array and then return that array. So let's define this method in such a way that it returns an integer array. And so the return type which we have to do type um, type now it's going to be an integer array an integer array and now we have to give it a name I'll give it a name I'll come up with a name like let's say um, greater I'll say, I'll say greater numbers um, maybe it makes sense I don't know yeah but greater numbers simply simply when we call this method it means that this method is going to re return greater numbers I guess numbers greater than the number n so it, it kind of makes sense but you can name it anything that makes sense to you all right so now we need to define parameters if any so let's look at the question it says an array um, write a method that accepts two arguments so we know it's going to accept two arguments so we have to define two parameters the first one is going to be an array and so let's define a parameter for an array it said we should assume that the array is that it, it contains integers so let's define a parameter for an integer array and so I'm going to define an integer array parameter integer array parameter and I'm going to call it um, integer array. That's what that's what I'm going to call it. And it says, so it says an array and a number n. So the second argument or the, the second parameter we have to define is going to be the num the number n. And so since we are dealing with integers, right? So I'm going to define that second parameter as an integer. So integer, I'm going to call it number. Right? Okay. So we are done with the method header. Now it says. Um, assume that the, the in array contains integers. The message, okay. And so now we have to write the code to basically determine all the numbers in this array greater than the number n, right? So let's write a loop that's going to go through the integer array. First of all, let's do that. I'm going to create a for loop. And I need, I'm going to basically create a variable for the index. We're going to use as an index uh, to go through the, uh, this array. So I'm going to create an integer variable 
because in the index it's, it's, in, it's an integer it's going to be an integer all the, the index the indices are integers so int index I'm going to initialize it to 0 because the first element in an array has an index of 0 so I'm starting off with index 0 and I'm making sure that I'm saying as long as the index is less than the integer array dot length now every array has a public field called length that stores the length of that array and so I'll explain this in a second um, actually let me do it now and so we are using index to refer to the indices of each array or the index of each element in this integer array now we know that we, we know that each element in an array has is represented by an index right the first element in an array has an index of 0. The second element in an array has an index of 1. The last element in an array has an index of 1 less than length of the array. And so if we have an array of 7 elements, the first element has an index of 0, and the seventh element has an index of 6. So the last element in an array has an index of 1 less than the length of the array. The length of the array is 7. And so the last, the last index of um, of that array is going to be six. Okay, so we are, we are starting index from zero, and index is going to represent our our um, you know our index, you know, the, our particular index because it's a loop, and we are making sure that index is always less than the last. Uh, sorry, we're making sure that index is always less than the length of the array, right? Because the last index, or basically. Uh, yeah, you can think of it this way. First of all, the last index is going to be one less than the length of the array. Or we can say that the last element of the array is going to have an index of one less than the length of the array, right? So that's what we're doing here. In initializing the index to zero, making sure that the index is always one less than the length of the array. Making sure that index is a valid number, a valid index that we can use to represent any number in that in that array. All right, so index as, um, for int index is equal to zero. As long as the index is less than integer array dot length, do what's in the loop and before you come back up to check to see if index is less than integer array dot length add one to index and you can do that with int index plus plus or you can say index is um is going to be in, it's, it's equal to index plus one it's the same thing but i'll, but I'll use index plus plus so over here this is just checking to checking to make sure that we, we have a valid index and index is going to keep track of the particular index of that array. What we should do is, um, so, the, so to make it to make it more clear, the very first time this loop iterates, index is going to be zero, and then it's it's going to iterate again and check to make sure that index is a valid index. Index is less than the length of the array, right? Make sure that at any time index can the value of index can be used to represent any elements in that array. So it checks that, and then it does what's in the loop. And then it increases index to one. And so the second time index will be one. And then the third time index will be two. The fourth time index will be four and the three. And so it's making sure that index is uh, while while it's doing all that, it's making sure that index is always less than the length of the array. Because that proves that that index is a valid index. That index can be used to represent any any element in that array. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so once we have once we have that we know this is going to index is we, we know we are going to have the index to go through all the elements in the array now let's figure out how to determine all the numbers in this array greater than this number and so we have we're going to write an if statement to check that an if statement to to check to see at any time if okay the particular el the particular element okay based on the index the element in this array. So if at any time integer array, okay, index, index is used to represent the, that particular you know an element in this array. If index is zero, then we are we are talk, we are referring to the very first element in this array. So if the first this this is the very first time the loop is iterating. If the first element in the array, okay, is greater than number, okay, if it's greater than number. Okay, Th that's what we need, right? That's we, then we found a number that's greater than the number. You know, we found it, then we found the number in an array in that in that in that array that's greater than this number, and so we can re we can return it, right? But the thing is, 
this is probably not going to be the only number uh, um, in that array or in the, in the integer array that's greater than number and so we have to basically compile them we have to put them all together and make sure we have all the numbers before we, we return it and so let's create another array that's going to do that for us um, not in the follow loop sorry not in the follow loop outside the follow loop let's create in the method outside of follow loop let's create another array that's going to hold all the numbers greater than okay all the numbers in the integer array greater than number and so I'm going to create an integer array right I'm going to call it I'll call it array to be returned just so we know just so it's clear to us array array to be returned or I'll call it greater numbers to be returned I know it's a long name but you know, I like not long names because you know it works you know I mean it makes it easier to you know I'm doing this so it's clear to everyone and it's, and it's clear to me to when I do it this way too but you can name it something short if you are not comfortable with long names as long as it makes sense to you so integer greater number greater numbers okay to be array there sorry <laughs> that's funny integer array greater numbers to be returned okay it's going to be equal to now this is just just a variable that's going to hold an integer array now I need to create that array array in, in memory and so I'm going to create a new integer array oh, new integer array and now I need to set the size but the thing is I wouldn't know how many numbers in this I wouldn't know how many numbers in this array uh, okay are, are greater than the number variable or are greater than what's stored in the number here I wouldn't know and so you know we have to do something we have to figure out a way now we know that we are dealing with integer array which contain which will contain integers right which will contain integers we'll declare that in main later on but we know we're, de we're going to deal with an integer array that's going to hold integers and so the worst case scenario is we're going to have the worst case scenario is all the numbers for example if if, if the number stored in the integer array is let's say one two and three then, and if the number stored in number here is zero, then all the numbers greater than zero in this array that has one, two, and three will be one, two, and three. Okay, will be the size of will be the, will, will have a length of three. Um, so integer array, let's say, if it's one, two, and three, well, it has a length of three. If the number here is zero, then all the numbers in integer array that you know greater than number will be one, two, three. That's that's the length of three. So the worst case scenario is we are, you know we are going to have the a, a length of of integer array, right? And, and so I hope I'm, I'm explaining this well. So what I'm trying to say is let's let's basically use a length of integer array because we d we don't know how we don't know the numbers we don't know all the numbers in this array that are going to be greater than number right here. And so let's initialize this to the size of integer array, right? To have let's say the maximum size, right? It's because Greater number, greater numbers to be returned is is going to have a length of integer array or or less. We are going to we are either going to have one number that's greater than this number. We are going to have we can have two numbers that 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 are greater than this number. We can have you know zero numbers actually th th that are greater than. So it's always going to be less than or equal to the length of integer array. And so let's set this to integer array. Dot, sorry, integer array dot length. We know that every array has a public field called length that stores the length of the array. And so to make it even clearer, let me use a comment to explain it. So assuming we have uh, an array here, okay, I'm just going to do this, of these numbers, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm, I, I enter a number here. So a number is, let's say, 6, right? The program is the, the method is basically figuring out all the numbers here th that are greater than six. In this case, we're going to have another array. You know, we're going to basically store all the numbers in another array here, right? And so this array will be empty. The length of it will be zero. Okay. Now, assuming I, the number is zero, all the numbers greater than zero in this array, uh, they are basically one, two, and three. One, two. And three. The length is going to be what three. 
that, that's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is we're going to have a length of three, and that happens to be, you know, the length of this original array two. The worst case scenario is we're going to have a max length of three, and you know anything or less than that. Assuming we have a number here which is two. Um, well, hold on a second. Yeah, assuming we have a max length here which is. Um, I hope I did the calculation right here, but <laughs> let, let's continue. All right, so assuming we have a, a a number here, which is two, a number which is two, right? We are figuring out all the numbers in this array greater than two. And so this array now will have three, right? Because three is, only, three is the only number here, which is greater than two. Its length will be one. There's only one number in this array. And so the length will always be one or the max length will always be for three, pretty, pretty much. Assuming we type in zero again, all the numbers greater than zero in this array is one, two, and three, right? One, two, and three. The length is three. Even if I type in a negative six, six as a number, all the numbers greater than negative six in this array is one, two, and three. The, ma the length is going to be three. So no matter what, the length is going to be three or less. I mean, in this case, the length of the length of the array that's going to be returned is going to be equal to the length of the original array or less. And so that so that's what, what I was trying to explain. And so I hope it's clear. If it's not, please comment down below and I'll and I'll explain I'll explain further. I'll do everything to explain further.